Here we have a GraphQL API that should turn in a cart by ID that we provide through the argument in the query. This has various fields on the cart type. One of the types that is inside of here is for the items, which is of type cart item. Cart item also has the line total and unit total of the type money. And if we run the GraphQL request, you can see that we'll get a mock response. Inside of the index.ts file for our GraphQL server, we are simply defining some mock data that will be returned to us when we make a query. And we are defining some query types and root query types for the cart model and the items. And here is the schema for our GraphQL API. If we open the cart items and the schema alongside each other, you'll notice that we have certain fields that don't exist in the GraphQL schema. This is often the case when you're working in a real world project. Your database looks completely different to what the end consumer may consume from your GraphQL endpoint. You can see here that the cart items have an inferred type. So if we change the ID of one of these to be true instead of a string, when we make a GraphQL request, there will be an error. You'll notice when we change that string to a boolean, there was nothing in our IDE to tell us that this was invalid. You'll also notice when we define the resolver for our query cart, that when we return an object here, there is no hints to you as a developer from the IDE what you can or cannot return, or what the types may be. So here if we define an invalid object, only when we execute the query will we get an error from the system. Because this error happens at runtime and not build time, we want to introduce something that will help us during development to speed up showing these errors if we make any mistakes. Today we'll be using the GraphQL code generator to type the resolver type for our GraphQL server. So when we are creating the resolver types, the GraphQL code generator can automatically create a signature for what that may look like. This then prevents us from returning any invalid data from those resolvers. You can install this dev dependency as you would any other. Using the command line, you can install this into your node project. And we'll also need to install some plugins. The GraphQL code generator has a vast array of different plugins that you can use to automatically code gen. Today, we'll be using the TypeScript plugin itself and the TypeScript resolvers plugin. Once the dependencies have installed, we'll next go ahead and create a file for the code gen config. We'll need to create a YML file in the root of our project. If you give the file a name of codegen.yml, then the CLI for GraphQL codegen will automatically pick this up. Then let's go ahead and define what we'll generate. The first file that we'll generate will be types.ts. Then we can specify all of the plugins that run for this file. We'll come back to this later and configure this with some additional advanced options to show the power of GraphQL code generator. Next, inside of the package.json, let's go ahead and define a generate script and we'll simply execute the GraphQL codegen command. This will automatically pick up the codegen.yml file because that's what it's expecting as a default. Now let's go ahead and run npm run generate. Once run, you'll notice in the root of your project where we defined types.ts as a file name in our config that a new file has been created with some types. Everything that was inside of the schema.graphql file for our queries and types cart is now inside of here typed. And because we installed the TypeScript resolvers plugin, you'll notice the automatically generated resolvers type inside of the types.ts file. Let's go ahead and import this in our index.ts file, and then we can assign this resolvers to our resolvers constant for all of our different GraphQL resolvers. You will immediately notice that we have some errors within our index.ts file now. The query for cart will not correctly resolve. So before we even run this code, we can tell there's an error. If we reference the schema.graphql file once more, you'll notice that the cart is expected to return an ID. But here we are returning underscore ID and we are missing some other fields. If you're using a ORM that generates types for your models automatically, then you'll not need to do this step. However, for the purposes of this video, let's explicitly create some types for our model. We'll first create the cart model, which has a underscore ID field of type string. Then it will also have items and currency. Currency will be of a enum and we'll also have the cart items. Currency will be of a enum type. So let's define that and add some example enum values. Then let's go ahead and create the cart item model. The cart and cart item models have the field currency. This isn't exposed through the GraphQL API, but it's used to generate the value of the type money, which is used for the subtotal, unit total, and line total of our cart and cart item models. Next, inside of the index.ts file, let's import cart model and cart item model from the model file. We can then assign the cart items to the type cart item model. 
and we'll update the currency to include the value of the enum currency code. We'll select the USD value here. Then let's do the same for our array of carts. We'll set the cart type to be of many cart models. We can see inside of the resolver for the type cart that the parent or the cart model itself for ID here is still the cart type that we have defined inside of our GraphQL schema. It's not referencing the type inside of our model file. Thankfully, the TypeScript Resolvers plugin that we installed inside of our GraphQL code gen file allows us to define some mappers. We'll first map cart to the cart model, then cart item, and then the enum values for our currency. If we once again run the generator for GraphQL code gen, this will update our types.ts file. We can see inside of types.ts, this is now using the cart model that we have defined inside of our project. If we go back to the index.ts file, we no longer have any errors because the cart now is using the cart model that we have defined for our database model type. And we are still fulfilling the GraphQL output return type. If we try and define another resolver for another query, you'll see that we get an error because this isn't defined on the resolver's return type for query. Then if we once again run the query to fetch all of our products, you'll see everything is working as it did before.